Happening now, the latest in a regional abduction case that came to an end in the village of Falconer. Plus, local lawmakers are slid to vote on protecting constitutional rights this week here in Chautauqua County. Well, it is a wet one out there for this Tuesday. The rain is going to continue, but we'll have a couple dry days this week. We'll talk about it in detail next as the news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. A 43-year-old man is behind bars after allegedly abducting a person in western New York. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Town of Ellicott police say that Jason Talley was arrested in the village of Falconer early Monday following the alleged abduction in Erie County. Around 3 a.m., officers located a suspicious vehicle near 7 Richard Avenue. Following a brief standoff, four people exited the house, including Tally, who was then taken into custody. Police say two, off two others, Zaid Mendoza and Desiree Corrigan, were wanted out of Cattaraugus County for a armed home invasion robbery. Police recovered a 45 caliber pistol and a small quantity of narcotics from the home. A female was taken to UPMC Chautauqua Hospital for treatment of her injuries. Well, the city park will now receive video surveillance cameras in the wake of a vandalism to its statues earlier this year. Jamestown City Council unanimously approved the acceptance of grant money from the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation during its meeting last night. According to the agenda, the grant is worth nearly $6,200. A joint investigation between Jamestown Police and the FBI remains ongoing. Specifically, police say they're investigating anti-Semitic and anti-African-American graffiti that was placed on multiple statues. In addition, a separate statue was stolen from that same exhibit in May. A rally taking a stand against white supremacy and hate was held in Jamestown earlier this summer, highlighting the historical significance of an Underground Railroad exhibit which was vandalized. Well, Chautauqua County lawmakers are slated to vote on two motions that support constitutional rights and ask for alternatives to COVID-19 vaccine mandates. According to the agenda from the clerk of the legislature, the motions call on state and federal leaders to keep their legislative and executive powers within the bounds of their constitutional authority and call on New York to consider alternatives to vaccination mandates for health care workers. Residents first took a stand against New York State's COVID-19 mandate for health care workers and called for a constitutional sanctuary during last month's legislature meeting. Now, during the county executive debate between incumbent Republican P.J. Wendell and Democratic challenger Norm Green, the two were asked about that idea. Green warned against it, saying the motions might scare developers away from the area. Just an absurd idea. You know, the only companies we're going to be attracting will be uh, companies that uh, produce, uh, uh, produce pillows or uh, produce, uh, <laughs> or, or produce uh, or Confederate flags. Wendell, meanwhile, defended the concept. Insulting the people that want to protect rights as backward thinking. What we are doing is protecting all New Yorkers. This is not going to be a haven for those who want to avoid the mandates. This is going to be our county's commitment, as was Cattaraugus's county, to uphold the Constitution. Nevertheless, Green, along with a few other county lawmakers, feel this is a bad move because it discourages the science. He's giving cover to people that will not, that will not get vaccinated. And maybe they would have gotten vaccinated if he wasn't giving cover to them. He's telling these people, it's okay, we're a constitutional county, you don't have to do this. You're, you, it's my health we're talking about. It's those of us that have been vaccinated. It's, it's our health we're talking about. You're protecting the people that, you know, they're spreading the disease. And, you know, again, we went to 200 dead yesterday. In the end, Wendell explains it comes down to personal choice. The vaccine is a choice. You know, the same people that say my body, my choice are the ones demanding a vaccine. What I've asked, and the governor has heard my voice very loud, along with the 18 other county executives in New York State, the mandate for health care workers is overburdening. It's creating another health care crisis that is getting more and more difficult. Lakewood Fire Department waited two hours, two hours to drop off a patient because we can't get enough staff 
Now, since the original call for a sanctuary, a federal judge has ruled there needs to be a religious exemption added to part of New York's vaccine mandate for health care workers. The state plans to challenge that ruling, however. The group WNY Freedom Seekers are expected to gather outside of the county building in Mayville ahead of the meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. supporting the motion. Well, if you want to jump into leaf piles, this is your last week to do so, as the city of Jamestown is going to start collecting all of those leaves that are piling up next week. The city's Department of Public Works will start on Foot Avenue, moving northeast in a counterclockwise motion next Monday until they reach the east side of Washington Street in Fluvanna Avenue. A second phase of leaf collection will take place later in the month on November 22nd. Residents are asked to rake their leaves just behind their curbs and not into the street. Only leaves will be picked up, which excludes things like brush, head trimmings, garden debris, and tree branches. The department says any local farmers or composters who are interested in the leaves should call their office. Certainly that time of year. Let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comment section down below. We thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live on uh, Channel 716 on Roku and WNY News Now Streaming Network. It's great to see uh, Wanda, good to see Pam, uh, Doug, and Missy as well. Hopefully you're all having a great day. Got to say hello to a longtime viewer, Tracy and Wendy. We really appreciate your support because uh, we do this exactly for you guys. Well, now let's get a first check of our weather forecast. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter standing by with that. And uh, boy, it's a pretty wet one out there today, Dakota. Yes, it is a wet Tuesday out there. As we told you yesterday, this rain was going to be moving on in and it has this morning. So a look over the uh, Chautauqua Lake Skycam kind of shows you those gray skies, a few raindrops and choppy out there on the lake as well with that north wind of 18 miles an hour. And notice the temperature, 44 degrees, but this is what fall is supposed to feel like. None of this 60s stuff. I mean, we're not supposed to be in the 60s in October, but notice the rain coverage today. This is a very interesting thing I wanted to mention very quickly. Notice this moving east and this moving west. This is uh, this is a front that ultimately got absorbed into this. So notice how it kind of just kind of whoop fades away uh, as it gets sucked into this main rain band. And this is all in association with a storm system off the northeast coast. You might be hearing about it, but uh, this storm system is going to bring heavy rain mainly out to the east of us. But we are going to see this rain uh, increasing through the day today. 63 was the high yesterday. Started the day at 41, 78 and 15 are the records for the day. So through the afternoon, rain overspreads east to west. Normally our weather flows west to east, but it's going in the opposite direction today. Some downpours possible mainly across the easternmost areas of much cooler. 42 hills, 50 at the Lake Erie water with a healthy north wind. Now we do get a couple dry days this week, then it's back to the rain. Plus, are we going to stay dry for trick-or-treating? We'll give you our early thoughts in just a couple of minutes. So by the end of next week, millions of kids in the U.S. could be eligible to roll up their sleeves for a COVID-19 vaccine. As Erie News Now's Molly Samora reports, we could be one step closer today after the FDA is expected to meet for emergency use authorization of the vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. The FDA could give the green light for the COVID vaccine for young children as soon as today. Local pediatrician from AHN St. Vincent, Dr. Ann Zomzik, tells me what this could mean. We'll have, you know, less infection and the kids will be in school more. You know, we won't have quarantining, the kids being home, you know, potentially being exposed to somebody else at school. So that should certainly help a lot. If the CDC ultimately endorses the two-shot lower dose vaccine, about 28 million children would be eligible. Seen is still two doses from Pfizer. It's three weeks apart. And then it's still going to take a couple of weeks after that to have, you know, good antibody response. So the sooner we can get it going, the sooner we'll have protection for the kids as well. Those shots could start going into the arms of five to 11 year olds as soon as next week. Population that is unvaccinated at this point. Um, of course, many of their parents have been vaccinated, so hopefully these children will be vaccinated as well. And that will make a difference in the herd immunity for us. But ultimately, it's up to the parents. As Pfizer says, they're already packing, ready and waiting to ship out its vaccine for kids. 
both ways. I mean, a lot of people, you know, have concerns and questions, but once you know, you can answer their questions and find out exactly what it is that worries them about it. Um, that often helps. So, but most people are very excited and eager. Molly Samora, Erie News Now. Well, thank you. The CDC is set to meet on November 2nd. So if both the FDA and CDC approve the shot, kids could be getting their vaccine as early as November 4th. Well, New York Governor Kathy Hochul received her COVID-19 booster shot yesterday as part of her effort to promote widespread vaccinations. The 63-year-old was eligible because she received the single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine earlier this year. Hochul got her Madonna, Madonna booster at a public ribbon cutting at the Decker College of Nursing and Health Sciences in Johnson City. That's near Binghamton. Well, meanwhile, officials with Chautauqua County's Health Department are returning to SUNY JCC this week to host a COVID-19 vaccination clinic there. Walk-ins are welcome at the clinic at the college's Physical Education Department building on Curtis Street from 9 to 1 on Thursday. All three vaccines, Pfizer's, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, will be available for first doses. Anyone ages 12 and up are up available, while Moderna's and Johnson & Johnson is available to anyone 18 and up. Additionally, booster doses will be available to those 65 years of age and older or those who are 18 in years of age and older with underlying medical condition or those who work or live in a high-risk setting are also eligible. Well, coming up, gasping at gas prices, why fuel costs keep ticking up here in Jamestown. And later, the need for snowplow drivers here in New York who can qualify. We'll let you know next as WNY News Now continues. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. What could you lose in a home fire? Your possessions? Your home? Your memories? Don't let your world go up in smoke. Make sure you have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones, because fire is everyone's fight. This message was brought to you by the Jamestown Fire Department and the Chautauqua Safety Village. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Welcome to Honest John's Pizzeria, where you are the most important customer. Everything from freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has it all. And don't forget the ice cream! Order online today or check out our two great locations with buffets ready for every appetite. Don't I have the best job in the world? Located along the Amish Trail, the Randolph Retail Company offers a variety of clothing, jewelry, and gifts for any occasion. Offering uptown merchandise at small town prices, our locally owned business balances quality and value. With complimentary gift wrap here at the Randolph Retail Company, we pride ourselves in personal service. Check out our Facebook page or stop in today at 127 Main Street Randolph, just a 20 minute drive from Jamestown. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Gas prices in the Jamestown area are higher than the state average. That's according to GasBuddy.com, who prices continue to increase, who says prices continue to increase across the board. As of this morning, the average price for a gallon of gas is $3.55, with the state's average at $3.53. The average price is up 10 cents from last week, and one year ago, the average price was $2.25.
The cause for the price jump is high oil prices, with the cost around $85 per barrel, a 120% increase since last year. A global energy crunch is also impacting the prices of coal and natural gas as well. Well, the New York State Department of Transportation is looking to hire more snowplow drivers ahead of this snowy weather season. The state is looking to hire people with all types of experiences, ranging from trainees to fully licensed drivers. Some positions are seasonal, but all have the possibility of permanent employment. For more information and positions, including how to apply, head on over to ny.gov. Well, advocates held a disability rally at the Pennsylvania State Capitol in support of direct support professionals, or DPSs, yesterday. Erie's News Now's Brendan Scandalin was at the event and explains what DPS organizations and advocates are now calling for. If I didn't have staff, I would not have the same freedom as everybody else. Claire Kriego is a self-advocate who thrives with support from DSPs with organizations like the ARC of Pennsylvania. However, these essential support services are at risk. Well, actually, it's already happening. You know, we've got uh, we've got 60 percent turnover among our staff. We've got you know 23 to 30 percent open position rates, which is unfathomable when you think about it. We had to close down two of our community homes, and we did that in order to sort of shore up the staffing. We have staff working 78-hour work weeks. They're quitting because they are burned out and they're underpaid, and like who can blame them? Advocates say the services have been underfunded and understaffed for decades. The pandemic only made things worse for DSPs and for families. We have family members now who typically would you know, have their loved one go to a day services and then go be able to go to work and do other things and then pick them up. They can't do that now because they've got to be at home. They've got nowhere for them to go. The ARC of Cumberland and Perry counties has been helping children and adults with disabilities for decades. But Executive Director Ann Coldridge says rising business costs each year make it more challenging. Every year, uh, cost to do business increases, health care, liability insurance. And advocates are calling on legislators to take action. We need money now so I can have the staff. I need to live a life of freedom. Brendan, thank you. For $540 million is a small part of the American Rescue Plan that the Commonwealth received. Advocates say the state is sitting on these rainy day funds and that Pennsylvanians are making sacrifices in the meantime. Well, back here in New York, expected heavy rainfall throughout the state has led leaders to declare a state of emergency in certain areas today. Governor Kathy Hochul included the areas of the eastern southern tier, as well as Long Island, New York City, Mid-Hudson, and Capital Regions. Rainfall totals are expected to be more than four inches for the regions, with more than one inch of rain an hour expected. The National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch last night that's currently in effect. Hochul urged residents to use caution ahead of their commutes and to plan ahead if the weather gets even worse throughout the day. She has also prepared assets for emergency deployment in those impacted regions. Certainly, yeah, everybody's kind of watching the skies today and uh, we have uh, no one better than Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter to, to do that. So hopefully no snow though out of this. I saw that there is some uh, snow B-roll mixed in there, Dakota. And I believe things are supposed to say warm enough that, that they're not going to be able to feel that in New York City. Yes, I mean, you know, there's going to be no snow out of this system, but there will be enough rain to cause some issues across the easternmost areas across New York City and then going into the eastern southern tier out towards uh, Binghamton a little bit yeah. further out to the east there. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are claiming this as a bomb cyclone. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, there is no such a meteorological term as a bomb cyclone. But this is a, I mean, it's basically like a nor'easter is basically right. what this storm is. And uh, it's going to cause some heavy rainfall totals, at least not here, but we are going to see at least some rainfall totals out of that. And right. Justin, I think you want to take a look at comments very quickly. Yeah, before yeah we do very weather. quickly. And then we will get to that because I know it is raining here, but yes. thankfully not as much as they've seen. Good to see, uh, good to see Carol, Linda, Scott, Diane, and... Uh, Troy as well. Hopefully you all are having a great day. We appreciate you uh, tuning in here on WNY News Now. We remind you, if you haven't checked us out on your television yet, you can do so on channel 716 on Roku. 
uh, you can search that up today and uh, be sure to add it to your lineup. And as you mentioned, Dakota, the rain is definitely on the minds of so many. And we've gotten a, a good amount of it, not as much mm -hmm. as they'll see downstate today. No, I mean, you know, we're not going to see that much, but there could be some pockets of heavy rain today. So first of all, the rainfall totals from yesterday, it's going to be you know, kind of stark in comparison to what some areas could pick up today, but most everybody across uh, the southern tier yesterday picked up less than a half an inch worth of rainfall, but we're going to add more to that as we go through the day. So that really is our next weather maker or the thing that we're keeping an eye on. So here's uh, First Defense Doppler radar showing you that rain. Now it's moving in, as we mentioned earlier, from an interesting direction. Most of our weather flows west to east. Well, this is moving in east to west, and there's a reason for that. It has to do with the flow around the low. This really is what we're watching here, these two low pressure areas right here. So we're wrapped up in that flow around the low, because again, low pressure spins counterclockwise, so that's why the rain is moving in that direction today. But this is the system that we're watching here that's throwing all this heavy rain across uh, the uh, downstate areas. Notice a couple flash flood warnings popping up there, and as Justin mentioned, there is a flash flash flood watch in place for areas near the downstate region. It's all the areas that are shaded here in dark green. That's the flash flood watch, and this goes until basically midnight. Some areas, uh, the uh, eastern uh, most extent or the western most extent of that flash flood watch, which includes Long Island, I think expires at six o'clock tonight, but it will go a little bit longer once you work into the eastern southern tier. But we've got clouds downtown right now, but officially at the airport, the airport is reporting a light rain shower. Temperatures have gone down today from where they were. We were at 41 at 11 o'clock. Now we're down to 40 at noon with a healthy northwest wind of 13. And look at the wind chill freezing. Yes, we have a wind chill out there today, so bundle up because of that healthy wind. So here's the newest one, a future scan showing you the rain overspreading across the southern tier today. There could be some pockets of moderate rainfall at times, but it looks like the heaviest rain is going to remain off to our east, maybe out towards the Rochester area. That looks like where some of that heavy rain will likely settle. The rain ultimately moves away as the low pressure area works up, uh, as the low pressure area works up, uh, as it works up into New England. We're ultimately going to see the rain tapering off. Future scan does paint us mostly sunny for tomorrow. Don't agree with that. I do think we'll see some more clouds uh, through the area tomorrow, but we should see the sunshine returning in good supply by the time we go into Thursday. So here's the forecast rainfall totals coming off future scan. This is what we're expecting here. So again, we're looking at less than an inch in some spots, but again, there could be, you know, some heavy downpours here. And again, you can see the heavier rainfall once you work out with this green and yellow area out here. This is out towards, you know, Rochester going out that way. That's where you're going to see some of the heavier rain. How about the future? The next seven days of your life are right there. So I do think tomorrow should be mostly cloudy. I don't buy what the computer models are saying with mostly sunny, but we should see the sun returning in good supply on Thursday. More rain returns on Friday, another soaker. Saturday, rain continues. Sunday, the day itself, a few scattered showers looking better for trick-or-treating. Again, still need to fine-tune that. And then we should stay dry into early next week. We'll take a break. Be right back. with coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. How prepared is your family if a hurricane shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a blizzard? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. As Halloween approaches, many people will be thinking about carving a pumpkin. However, others might want to bypass that mess altogether and simply buy one that's painted. Well, there are pumpkin artists out there, and a man here regionally has been doing that job at Mason Farms for almost 30 years. 
Erie News Now's John Last talked with him for this edition of The Last Word. Works of art can be found anywhere in Erie, even on railroad overpasses. But this is the time of year you can find beautiful artwork on pumpkins. And this is a man who provides that art for Mason Farms on Peninsula Drive in Mill Creek. Paul Warner is a former Marine who answered an ad in 1992 and has been enjoying his Halloween season job ever since. Artistic person wanted to paint faces on pump. Well, you know, um, you have to think they want me if you do that type of stuff. Paul is wanted all right. The pumpkins he paints in the morning will most likely be sold by mid-afternoon. Paul used to take about 50 pumpkins home each day and paint them. He now lives at Erie's Soldiers and Sailors Home and paints the orange orbs on the Mason Farms property while sitting in his wheelchair. He now averages about 20 pumpkins a day, but still loves his work. To whom talent has been given, much will be expected. Like, you can do this, you should take advantage of it. Paul has painted hundreds of designs on pumpkins over the years. And the amazing thing is, the bestseller remains the same basic face he drew when he auditioned for the job. This one. The first day I applied, I did this one and a Mickey Mouse. And what about the second bestseller? Fake scary monster. While various versions of the jack-o'-lantern face sell off the shelves, Paul's other works of art are also popular. Halloween, of course, coincides with football season, and many Mason Farms customers are Steeler fans. I'll do a rough map of the state. I'll show the, uh, the Lake Shore, Erie, down here I'll write Sixburg, and people get it. Cleveland fans are not left out. Hey. The color of the pumpkin makes Paul's artwork a thing that Browns fans want. I'll do who let the dogs out. I'll do quarterback equals dog food, D-A-W-G, and then I'll list some of their better players over the years. The Halloween season is almost over, and the pumpkin art has created a lot of smiles from customers, especially from children. But Paul will be back for his 30th season next year, doing the job he loves. The overall thing is that it's a lot of fun and they pay me and watching the kids' reaction. With the last word at Mason Farms on Peninsula <laughs> Drive, John Last, Erie News Now. Thank you, John. Don't have too much fun there. <laughs> wow, uh, 30 years almost of painting pumpkins. That's, that's really incredible. And when you look at these arts of works, no matter what holiday, it's, there are so many people from across the area who are so talented in that sense. I mean, uh, you got to love it. You got to mm -hmm. love it. Well, actually, you know, it's funny because I never really heard of painting pumpkins until our own uh, Storm Hartman actually threw out on Facebook. Uh, he did a jack-o'-lantern, you know, carved right. his pumpkin, but I think his daughter's painted right. uh, the other ones that are sitting out on his porch. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I had never really heard of painting pumpkins. What a I great always... way, though. You don't have to have as much of the mess, but I'm a big pumpkin seed fan, so if I can get in there and carve it, I, mm -hmm. I definitely will. Let us know uh, what you guys think about this and more. Are you pumpkin carvers? Are you painters? Uh, Wendy Chiming, she says, that's awesome. It really is. And you think about it like a veteran like that who, who gave so much to our country and I just want to give back by painting these pumpkins. And I, the line that took me the most was the, the smiles on the kids' faces as, mm -hmm. as they get these pumpkins. I mean, it really, it really is. That's my, one of my favorite parts of Halloween now as an adult is looking to see how many young people in our community uh, enjoy, you know, getting dressed up, going out, and, you know, obviously the candy as well. So uh, we will look forward to that as uh, we continue to get ready for that uh, Halloween holiday, which uh, comes up, what, I think Sunday? Sunday, yep. Sunday, yeah. So, yeah, it's coming up. Uh, good to see Amber. Good to see David and Carol. Thank you all for joining us here uh, for WNY News Now today on uh, Facebook Live and on our uh, website, WNYNewsNow.com and 24-hour streaming network on Roku. If you haven't downloaded it yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's so easy. Dakota watches it probably, what, 24-7? I know you, you probably have it on in the Hunter household. The we actually app. have a gigantic television that sits in our den in the Hunter Palatial yeah. Estate that shows nothing but Channel 7 once in. Beautiful, beautiful. That was not a paid endorsement. Right? No. <laughs> That's it for us today. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day.